The Steelers first reported to training camp on Tuesday at St. Vincent College. We're going to talk about the top storylines from that. But the, one of the biggest things, we got our first impression of Larry Ogunjobi. And I, myself, Chris Carter, host of the Lockdown Steelers podcast, thought he made a very good one. We'll talk about him, what Najee Harris had to say, and Minka Fitzpatrick having something to say with his first day at camp, as well as some updates on injury list things, but why they're not a big deal yet. On your Pittsburgh Steelers, right here in the Lockdown Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things in the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find the show on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and YouTube. If you're watching this video on YouTube, hit the like button on this video if you enjoyed. Hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel to get all of our daily Monday through Friday episodes, as well as our bonus content whenever we have it. We did have some bonus content yesterday when Larry Ogunjobi first spoke. We'll get to Larry Ogunjobi in a second, but I wanted to start off with the immediate news. Now, you may have seen this, heard this. But you probably, if, if you're a casual fan who's like not up on everything during training camp right now, and there hasn't been any practices yet, you might have missed that Mika Fitzpatrick is on what's called the NFI list, which is the non-football related illness list for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and Tyson Alulu is on the pup list or physically unable to perform. Neither of these are bad indications of anything. Mike Tomlin explained these things away. Make, he said Minka Fitzpatrick simply fell off his bike during a vacation and it just messed up his wrist a little bit. He's fine. We literally spoke to Minka Fitzpatrick. He had nothing on his wrists. He's, I, I think he's totally fine. They just said they're going to be precautionary about it. And Tyson Alulu, he said he had some knee swelling issues because he was where he was working on that knee and maybe overworked it, uh, you know, in between mini camp and training camp. So they're going to rest him a little bit on the pup list but everyone else is healthy and I, or some people might say like oh no this is terrible it's not that big a deal these guys are going to be back probably by the second or third week of camp this all this is going to do is give and give time for like get players like trey norwood demarvin demarvin leal chris wormley isaiah loudermilk more chances to step up and practice with the first team so not a big deal i'm telling you right now that that's not a, not a concern. But what was a big deal, in my opinion, was Larry Ogan Joby arriving to camp. This is the first time we got to talk to him as Pittsburgh media because he was signed after minicamp was over. When you know, it, when uh, Stephon Tuitt's situation situation, he retired, and the Steelers had to kind of find it, find an answer. Um, one of the biggest things, and I said it several times in this show, I wasn't sure how that how the Steelers dynamic would be with Larry Ogan Joby when. You know, considering his past, you know, if you don't remember when Miles Garrett struck Mason Rudolph with that with with his, with a helmet over the head in 2019, Larry Ogunjobi was then on the Cleveland Browns, came up behind Mason Rudolph and pushed him after the entire incident was kind of playing itself out. So he got suspended. There was some bad blood, but when Ogunjobi showed up, there was no malice, and he kind of he he did he did speak. We did publish a video, but I'm gonna play the video play the video in audio right here. So the, those who might have missed the YouTube clip that I uploaded to our YouTube channel, if you're listening to this on audio, um, here's Larry Ogunjobi talking about how his the beef that was with Ben with, with Mason Rudolph back that back in three years ago, it's not a thing anymore, and he's kind of excited to get the opportunity to play for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Here's Ogunjobi. Talk to Mason, do you need to? Or you get uh, he reached out when I had signed. You know, I feel like it's just water in the bridge. I mean, that was years ago. I have no hard feelings. I don't think he has any hard feelings. I feel like as, you know, men in a sport, you know, sometimes we act out of emotion. You know, I was defending my teammate. He was doing his thing. And um, I feel like it just is what it is. You know, we reached out. We talked to each other. We split. That was over the day it happened. You feel me? So for me, at least, for me at least so. Um, I just, the only way I can move is forward, and I feel like you know, that's why I'm here. Larry, you had seven sacks last year. Now you're joining the team that's led the NFL in sacks for five straight years. What has your, been your thoughts as far as how you're going to bring something different to the defensive line with Cam Hayward? Um, I just want to make plays and play. This is the longest I haven't, you know, been playing football, you know, not, without doing OTAs and, you know, the injuries. So I'm just really excited just to get back on the football field and just continue to elevate my game. I feel like, you know, I hit my stride last year, and I just want to build and, you know, keep getting better. So few things there that Ogan Joby said, one to the Mason Rudolph question and second to my question. Um, first, I think it's great that Mason Rudolph reached out. I think that's really big of him. And because like Mason Rudolph could have taken the stance like, yo, man, this guy blindsided me. I did nothing wrong. And, you know, he made the effort to reach out and make sure, hey, we're good. This is not an issue. Welcome to the team. Let's get it going. 
And then also for Ogan Joey to be like, yeah, that, that we, he's like, he was passionate. I was passionate. We were, it was a moment, but it's a, it's, it's professional sports stuff like this happens and not to excuse the actions of the time, but it's something that they're not going to hold as a grudge against each other. And I think that's a, a healthy thing. Uh, Ogan Joby also talked about, as, as you saw, he said he felt like he hit his stride. He was hitting his stride last year and how he, you know, that got cut, you know, cut short by his, uh, by his injury in the playoffs for the Bengals. Um, but, you know, I, I think all, all signs indicate he's on a good track. He talked about how he's been rehabbing and doing everything he's supposed to with his foot every day. He says he feels good about it. Um, the Steeler, he's, he said the Steelers plan to ease him in. Mike Tomlin confirmed that later in his press conference, basically like, hey, we're not going to rush to, to put him in there because we want to test out his body and see what he what kind of an athlete he is. Uh, so, you know, we're not going to rush anything until we, we have a better sense of who he is as a player. But all signs point to... Larry Ogunjobi being a con- a considerable piece for this defense and one that I think will fit in. This I, I don't see this as a Melvin Ingram situation where by week four or five or whenever Melvin Ingram got you know forced himself out of Pittsburgh, he, Larry Ogunjobi is going to be like, yeah, I don't want to be here anymore. I, I think Larry Ogunjobi is going to start. I think he's going to he, he's going to know his role. And I think he's going to be comfortable with whatever roles he role he gets. He seems very, very humble about it. He knows he, he kind of has to build himself back up to be ready to take on that role. Um, but I think that was it was it was a good showing on his part. And Mike Tomlin even he said, you know, when it would ask what's his role going to be, he said, you know, you know, people. So, uh, someone asked during the press conference, you know, about, you know, the three, four, where would he fit there? A nose or a defensive end type of position. And Mike Tomlin is, is saying something that I've told you guys a lot on this very podcast, the three, four and things like that they're not as prevalent anymore he said we're he, he like thomas Trevor said we're more in our sub packages like a nickel and dime than anything else so if anything ogan Joby's just going to be another interior defensive lineman and he and when asked if he was more of a sub package inside pass rusher he said absolutely and that gives me some some thoughts to say like okay ogan Joby's not there to be your traditional defensive lineman that takes up all the snaps like you know like some Steelers fans may think about Casey Hampton or an Aaron Smith or the guys before you know like the Cam Hayward era but I I think you got to look at it from a different lens that's like hey look you know this is going to be a guy that you can line up on third down and say go get the quarterback um and probably they need him to be a guy that can line up on first and second down and goes and say hey stuff the run and do your job here but I think a lot of the Steelers formations on defense aren't going to call for, you know, three down linemen to handle their business on top of the four linebackers. I just don't think that's going to happen. And Ogan Joby's, you know, one thing he did say when, when asked about it was that he was ready to take on whatever role they gave him. Uh, and that's player speak. That's what they are supposed to say. But I thought all things considered, when asked about the Mason Rudolph situation, when asked about his injury, when asked about what his expectations were and how he fits into the team and all all things like that, I thought Ogan Joby made a very good first impression for be, for joining the Pittsburgh Steelers, at least on the media side of things. Um, and I will tell you that you know Cam Hayward seemed excited to be able to get to work with him. I talked to Demarvin Leal, and he told me straight up, he's like, "Listen, like I knew of him, but when I watched his, he said, is after we signed him, I watched his tape, and I got so excited, and I was like, oh gosh, I go, I got to pick this guy's brain because I like what he brings to the table." Ogan Joby did have seven sacks last season. Uh, Demarvin Leal also. He told me that he is now down in weight. Didn't give me a specific number, but he did say he was down in 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 uh in his, in his weight um from where he was, which is interesting because I thought he would try to bulk up more uh after you know heading into training camp. But all that being said, this def- defensive line, um, you know, Cam Hayward said this guy, he's no one can replace to it because to it was a very unique player on the field. But replacing the role that, that that was fit into the roster by that position, that's something they seem very confident that Ogan Joby's going to be able to do. And I think that they're excited to kind of, you know, bring him in, but not so much excited that they're going to rush him into a situation and maybe worsen the injury that ended his season last year. We're going to switch talk to the offense because Najee Harris spoke and I thought that he said some very interesting things. I want to get your thought. I want to get my thoughts to you guys on that, but also get you guys to listen to what Najee had to say as he reported in at St. Vincent College for training camp. But first, we got to talk to you guys about our great sponsors at Dave. Now, if you don't know about Dave, Dave is the banking app that. Is that is is helping you save money and help help you helping you budget all the time all the time because if you're going paycheck to paycheck if you're struggling with bills you need ways to help you save your money you also sometimes need extra money and that's why they have a fe- feature in their banking app 
called Extra Cash. It can get you up to $500 instantly. It's more money to fill your tank, buy a wedding gift, catch up on bills, do anything you need. You can finally tackle those expenses that you've been, have been stressing you out without any hangups. There's no interest or no credit check needed. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial relief that they need with Extra Cash. So if you're in a pinch and you need some help, be sure to download the Dave app and think of it as a helping hand from future you. Download the Dave app from the App Store right now. It's D A V E Dave. Sign up for the extra cash account and get up to five hundred dollars instantly. But for terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal instant transfer. Please apply. Banking provided by by Evolve Member F D I C. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. Uh, we talked about Larry Ogunjobi, and I thought him making a fir- good first impression was really solid. But, you know, Najee Harris made a really good first impression for a lot of people last year. Um, not just on the field with how his stiff arms or how, how many times he took care of the ball, but also off the field with how he was talking to the media. It seems he's very inspirational. A lot of he's like he's quickly become a fan favorite. Um, now, I will say it was interesting seeing Najee Harris pull up to St. Vincent, one, because you know, part of him, he seemed kind of reluctant to talk. He was he one. He didn't seem too happy to be that to be at St. Vincent. He I think he liked being at Heinz Field now, Ackershire Stadium. Um, but uh, I, I think that he he kind of was like, what are these dorms? I don't know. I don't know what the, this is ridiculous compared to, I guess, the life that he had at Alabama. Um, but uh, I, but still, you know, he took time to talk. And eventually when we got past that, I thought he gave some interesting words on leadership responsibilities, Mike Tomlin's expectations, Cam Hayward's expectations as an older guy trying to get Najee to step up. And Najee also got to talking about working with the rookies. I mean, this is kind of interesting. You know, this is a guy who, you know, he's got an approval, but he hasn't like solidified himself, like, you know, himself a future contract yet. He's still a guy that has to go through three more years and maybe four more years of playing uh, as a top tier running back in the NFL before he gets a a deal like that to stick around with for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And yet he's talking about looking out for the rookies right now. I'm going to let you guys listen to what Najee Harris had to say. I spliced together two different answers that he gave uh, you know, to, to different questions, one to mine, one to another. Uh, but I wanted to get you a full game of just him, him when he did start talking about leadership. Here is Najee Harris. Resonated. You seem to resonate with his message. That oh, yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, because him and Cam, you know, they brought me in there a lot uh, and talked about the leadership role. And they said they didn't, you know, later in the season, they – they didn't want me to they brought me in and said well, they didn't want me to to be that type of guy yet because they just want me to uh, get my feet wet um and just work slowly work into it but they told me you know there's gonna be a time where you need to to be that guy so it's now the time like Kenny and, and, oh yeah so i mean yeah yeah so we got a lot of new guys obviously um we got pickens we got george pickens kenny Pickett, you know all them austin you know even cam's brother we got a lot of people right now um a lot of guys who who needs to step in and play roles we got uh people coming up from last year you know um Pat, Pat having a good year last year, and you've seen what he could do. Um, we got more experience on the line. Um, you know, Deontay and Chase, you know, we got guys who, who's already shown that they could play. So what we need to do is we need to find, like, you know, what, what is something that we're all good at, and we need to find a way to, to give everybody the ball and have everybody, the playmakers, work in space. What are some ways we can, like, you know, give the playmakers the ball? Um, what is some way we could distribute the ball where everybody can eat and where, like, defenses – you know they're not going to know what to prepare for. Um, we need to have an explosive offense. We need some people who can take off, take the top off. Um, you know to keep the safeties at bay. We need so this time right now is, is going to be really important for us to find our identity of what our offense is going to look like and see what roles that these young guys are going to play for us. Um, you know I'm going to do everything I can to uh, to help these guys out, especially Pickens. Um, I think he's going to be a real good guy for us. Um, you know just his size and his athleticism. I think he can create a lot of mitch matches. Um, Austin, too, in a slot, I feel like, you know, he can create a lot of mitch matches, too. His speed is fast. So that was Najee Harris, and he was, and you, you heard him talking about, you know, the leadership and the expectations and everything. One, he, he seems to play down his vocal leadership point. But when we asked Mike Tomlin that, he thought, he, he was right up. He was like, that guy is a vocal leader. He, he is that guy. But, you know, it's funny because Najee tries to play that down. But then 
you listen to the part where he started talking about the rookies and how he just started rattling off those names and saying this guy and that guy, and we need to do this, and we need to take the top of the defense, and we need to get that. This guy knows football. This guy thinks football. He lives football. He's not just a football player. He's not just a guy who's just trying to get his – his. he is about that. It's, it's, it's interesting because, you know, we talked the last two days about Ben Roethlisberger's comments about, you know, today's NFL being more about me first guys and guys who do that. Najee Harris has spent most of his time talking about like, hey, this, this guy over here and that guy and how we want this to this to work in leadership, not about, uh, you know what, I want 2000 yards or you know what, I, I want to be first team all pro or you know what, I want to prove that I'm better than Derrick Henry. Nothing like that. It was all about team and, and focusing on that. And that to me says a lot about that the messaging that Mike Tomlin's doing that the Steelers are doing to get to him to say, hey, buddy, Ben's gone. Someone's got to step up and be the face of this offense. And there is no face of this offense, whether you think it should be Kenny Pickett or Mitch Trubisky or someone else right now. The face of the offense is kind of a, a role that needs to be stepped into. But the per, the person who's first in line to do that is Najee Harris, which is why they made him a first round draft pick last year. And I think that that's a role that a lot of people overlook in importance when looking at how this team is currently constructed. Because Najee Harris is going to be a guy that he understands his role as a running back and how it plays into everything else. But he also understands that he has to push others to, to understand that as well. And that's where I think is the most interesting thing because he gets that messaging. And when you listen to Mike Tomlin talk about things that need to kind of go down the command chain to the players and the attitudes that they need to embrace, that attitude – that you, that you connect to Najee Harris is a tangible thing and something the Steelers really want to do this year to set a new tone moving forward. Now, if it wasn't clear from how I clipped that together because I didn't want to spend too much time of y'all listening to me ask my question, Najee Harris, I asked him about the Pivot Podcast interview because you know when Mike Tomlin went on, he spoke with Ryan Clark and Fred Taylor and Crowder and all these other guys, um, and – uh, he, he spoke to them and he talked about it. Najee Harris had a very good response. He said, that's my coach. I'm proud to play for that guy. So I asked him, hey, what made you so proud? And, you know, he was like, and he, I was like, I honestly can't remember right now. But when I started getting on, I, hey, his message, his message resonating and, and getting to connect with you guys. He, he immediately understood what I was getting at. And I, I think it's very important that Najee Harris becomes that be, becomes that face that becomes that leader and the way that he sounds coming into his second training camp yeah he doesn't seem happy about St. Vincent yeah he doesn't seem uh he he, he kind of wishes things were a little bit different you could kind of tell in his demeanor at times that it was like you know what this isn't the same chipper Najee Harris that showed up to practice every day last year and was like hey guys how's it going let's talk about this and let's talk about that even though he did talk about a lot of things I'm not saying that was different but I think there's a serious veteran sense in him now, even in him just his second year. He could still – like I, I usually give guys until their third or fourth seasons before I start looking at them and say, okay, you need to step into this role. Um, but Najee Harris, he, he's not waiting. He's not taking his time. He's going and doing it. And to me, that I think is a big stage for the offense. Um, and again, for him talking about it, you know, he said one thing he also let on was that he doesn't have a roommate uh, because his roommate was cut, which tells you that, that his roommate was going to be Trey Edmonds um, because he was cut recently. The Steelers did sign Jeremy McNichols uh, running back from the Tennessee Titans. He's going to be thrown into the, th th the fray of, of backup running back battles, but let's, we'll see how that plays out. But, you know, you heard Najee Harris rattle off all those names. He talked about Calvin Austin and where and, and using him. He talked about George Pickens. He talked about Fryer. He talked about all these guys because he knows this is a talented offense, and he knows that if they're going to they, they're going to succeed this year, if they're going to put up points this year, they need to come together. They need everyone to kind of be on the same page. And and I think he knows that he has to be in the middle of that, stirring the pot and getting everyone to be on that same page moving forward. I want to flip it to the defense because we also got to hear from Minka Fitzpatrick. It's our first time hearing from him since his press conference since he signed his big deal. I thought it was interesting to hear what he had to say. We'll talk about him in just a sec. But first, we got to talk to you guys about BetOnline.net, your number one source for all your betting stats and sports information. You can find all your latest sports developments, league reviews, news, including everything that's going on right now in Major League Baseball. But also, if you want to set up your prop bets and all your things leading into the NFL season, NHL, NBA, all of that coming up in the fall 
go to betonline.net right now. You'll find a whole bunch of contests. You'll find a whole bunch of odds. You'll also find any all the information that will help you win those contests and make money while watching sports and predicting sports in the long run. Bet online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today. Use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in the action when you visit Bet Online, where the game starts. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. So we talked about Ogan Joby. We went to Najee Harris. Now we're flipping back to the defense real quick because I thought there was a really interesting tidbit that Minka Fitzpatrick talked about in a question that I had to him about Terrell Austin because you've heard Josh Taylor, who was on the show uh, yesterday with me, talking about not this topic, but talking about other things. But he and I have talked about this, this defense and Terrell Austin, and he's been one that's been on this show talking about the importance of him being the defensive coordinator and what it might do for the rest of the defense as far as increasing turnovers, being better together. One thing that I have noted is if you watch Steelers practices, one thing you can see when the first team defense, and this is over the last few years when Terrell Austin's been the, the, the defensive backs coach, whenever the first team defense comes off the field, or at least the first team secondary, you see Terrell Edmonds and Minka Fitzpatrick walk right up to Terrell Austin, who's behind the whole play, and they're just talking and going over things. And I wanted to get Minka Fitzpatrick's opinion on just, you know, one, that guy that he always goes to being the new DC and the benefits that it brings from it. And he had some very good insight that I think you'll want to listen to. Here is Minka Fitzpatrick. You guys were surveying the defense. What's it like being that with like that was your position coach? Now he's the coordinator who's calling the shots. What's that relationship like now as both of you kind of take forward, take steps forward in your career? Yeah. Um, you know, having T.A. getting promoted as, as a, uh, the D.C. was big for us. Uh, one, he's, he's a, a secondary guy, which, which is big. Uh, he, he loves the game. He's been in the game a long time. He's a smart guy. Uh, so, you know, we were all happy about it, about the, about his promotion. Uh, we're excited about it. He's a guy that's, that's not going to let the details slip. Uh, he's a guy that's thorough, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, and, and being back there with him, you know what I'm saying, and we, he still does it sometimes uh, uh, now, uh, just stepping back there. Is because he wants to see the whole picture. You know what I'm saying? A lot of guys across the league that are DCs, they don't like to see the whole picture because they're either a, a linebacker's guy or a DB guy or a D-line guy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, TA is the guy that's done it all. And uh, he likes seeing the big picture. So I think that's a big, big uh, advantage for, for us. Mika, Mika, when was the last time you were... I don't think Mika Fitzpatrick was fibbing or, or, or just promoting the guy that he likes there. That does seem to be who Terrell Austin is because he's been all over the defense. I don't see him just sitting around and chilling with this with the secondary as he's the defensive coordinator. I've seen him go up to defensive linemen, to linebackers, to everybody work working on those things. And I I think this is setting up an interesting coaching dynamic. Now we've talked a lot about Mike Tomlin, and especially we've also talked about Brian Flores a lot and how Brian Flores is going to specialize on linebackers, but how he is militaristic, how he's being very pointed and that hey you got it if you're gonna if you're gonna do an assignment you either do it right or you do it wrong there's no mostly right there's no kind of right there's no half right if it's not a hundred percent right it's wrong so you have guys like him at the position at the position coach positions working working with guys individually then you bring it up to the coordinator where you have Terrell Austin who sees the big picture and wants to wants to make sure that that big picture is adapting to what Mike Tomlin needs and to what this team needs to win games as Josh Taylor was talking about yesterday on the show this team if they're going to make the playoffs if they're going to you know finally win a game in the playoffs for the first time since 20 the 2016 season the 2017 uh you know playoff part if they're going to do it, it's going to take this defense creating turnovers. And that's going to mean that these guys are going to have to be more disciplined. That's going to, that's going to mean that these guys have to be, you know, so you have to be all kind of working in concert a lot more 2019 when they were, when they were just kicking everyone's butt on defense, it was because they were very much in concert and they, they, they understood where they had to be. There was a trust factor there. You know, guys weren't flying out of their roles to try to fill other roles. They were, they, everyone was doing their job at a high level even if you know not everyone was doing it at an elite level everyone was was more than adequate enough so that there was no clear weaknesses that you could pick at on the defense when it was crunch time that's what this defense has to get back to being and i think Mika Fitzpatrick patrick talking about terrell austin there brings a little bit of good insight from why he's excited about terrell austin being a defensive coordinator not just because they're they're boys not because they're guys but because he knows what this could mean for the rest of the defense and 
I've said this a lot, but I'm going to say it again. Minka Fitzpatrick last year didn't get to be his X-Factor version. Why? Because the run defense wasn't there. But also he was trying to help over here. He was trying to help over there. This year, they want to let him be the X-Factor again. You know, Troy Polamalu couldn't have been Troy Polamalu uh, that he was the first the first ballot Hall of Famer if the Steelers defense in front of him was in shambles. And it wasn't for most of his career, which is why he was able to fly around, be the superstar Tasmanian devil X factor that he was. Minka Fitzpatrick is a different type of X factor. He's he's closer to Ed Reed and Troy Polamalu and how he play, makes plays deeper downfield. But there's that's, that's still a major usage that the Steelers need to, to make, make the most of. And they're not going to be make them able to make the most of if this defense doesn't fully come together. So I say all that to say, I think Mika Fitzpatrick brought up some really good st- really good points up about Terrell Austin there, but it also makes me really encouraged to see, like, hey, am I going to be covering these the, a lot of these veterans who are going to get this picture and it's going to be a more, I guess, well-put-together system there for the Pittsburgh Steelers? That's what I think is coming for this team, and that's why I've been very confident. I've said 9, 10, 11 wins. I think that's a very good range, and there's. I think the the official betting line is seven and a half wins. I'm telling y'all, if you want to make money this year, I told you last year like, that the, the betting line was was eight, and they made it to nine. I'm telling you this year, they're gonna make it over seven seven and a half again. If you want to make some easy money, Steelers fans, go bet on that. But go bet on that wins line and get and, and bet the over because they're gonna get it. I, I really think a big part of this comes down to the coaching, comes down to the leadership, comes down to this how young how quickly these youngsters. Get get it together on the team because Minka Fitzpatrick's still mid twenties. You know he's 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 not he's not up there. He's getting into his prime. Najee Harris, you know he's he's in his second year. All these guys that we're talking about, they're young, but they're hungry, they're ambitious, and they want to be be the Steelers' leaders. I think that's a very important point here to start training camp. We'll get to see how these guys start you know start training camp officially on Wednesday today as we're there. I'll be there covering them for SteelersNow.com and also giving you some updates for the Locked On Steelers podcast. So if you want more training camp updates, go to SteelersNow.com, read the articles we've been writing. We're putting up, it's me, Alan Saunders, Nick Faribault. We're cranking them out every day, trying to make sure that you're, you're on the same page with us as far as what's going on at training camp. And here, if you're a fan of the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'll be giving you updates here as well. What I'm trying to do is do a little daily like update of, who won seven shots or who was a player that stood out so that we don't have to spend too much time about that in the podcast where we're talking about bigger things with our guests and as we move forward. But again, thanks so much for checking out the Lockdown Steelers podcast. I've been your host, Chris Carter. We, we, we appreciate everyone who checks out the show. Follow us, on, follow us on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, excuse me, at Carter Critiques. Listen to this show on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, or watch us on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get all of our daily Monday through Friday content. Give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts with a positive comment to get a special shout out at the end of the show. Again, thanks everybody. I'm going to head back up to Latrobe tomorrow, tomorrow well, today, excuse me, Wednesday when you're watching this. And I'm going to be I'm going to be getting seen the first time these, these new Steelers practice uh, you know, at training camp for the first time since 2019. It's going to be a fun one. Stay tuned with, with me as I do it. It's going to be a fun summer. We hope you stick with us the whole time. Be back tomorrow for another episode of Lockdown Steelers. 